Hey everybody, my name is Mart and in this video I want to talk all about the timeline and animation tools in a sprite. Let's roll the intro! So I just want to clarify that this video is about the timeline and tools of animation, not animation itself. This is going to help you have an easier time going into animating and you might find some resources that will help your animation flow in the future. Um, so it's basically just to make sure that you know all the things that you can do in a sprite when you are animating and it will help you animate faster and better. So it's more about showcasing what's in your tool belt when you're going to animate. And these videos are always aimed to be very resourceful for people who are very new to this rather than helping people out who already got experience though there might be a few things in here for you too if you do have some experience with animation in a sprite anyway let's get the video started so the first thing i want to talk about is the timeline in a sprite and it's essentially where you're going to do everything when it comes to animation and you can find the timeline down here below so let's talk a little bit about the timeline so what is the timeline for those who don't know well, if you've ever seen one of those flip books where you flip them through really quick and see a picture moving, it's basically every number is the page of that flip book. So when you press play, it will play the first page and then it will go on to the second page, third page and so on and so on and so on until it reaches the end of all the frames that you have in your animation. So that is basically what the timeline is if we cut it really short. We'll talk more about that. So let's talk about all the buttons that's down here because there's a lot of buttons down there. Some of them are more useful than others, but either way, we're going to talk a little bit about what they are and what they can do. So the first button down here I want to talk about is the little eye icon. It's pretty simple. It doesn't do a whole lot. If you click it, it shows whatever's on the layer. So when the eye is closed, it's not going to see that layer. And if the eye is open, it's going to show that layer. And that is basically what the eye does. Oh yeah, by the way, when the eye are closed, you can actually not draw on the layer. So it's also a way to kind of make sure that you're not drawing on something if you want to hide it away and work on it later. Like I said, very basic stuff. So let's move on to the next one. So what is the lock icon? Well, it's pretty simple as well. When the lock down here is open, you can move your layer around. And when the lock is closed, you can actually not drag your layer around or you can draw or any other things on the layer. I'm sure all of us have accidentally drawn on the wrong layer once in a while. So lock your layer if you don't want to draw on it. Uh, it can be super useful and it will probably save you some time once in a while. But yeah, that's basically the lock layer. So let's just move on to the next one. All right, this one is a little more interesting. This one is all about the cells. It's the little icon down here with the two dots. And if you click on it, you can see it becomes this icon with one long oval. So what is the difference between the two dots and the ovals? Depending on what icon your layer has activated, every time you make a new frame, it will either make an individual cell or a linked cell. So what is an individual and linked cell? Well, a individual cell is its own pictures. You can see down here on my art timeline, it's all individual cells. So if I go back, you can see all these are the individual pictures in my timeline. But where you can see I have this link cell down in my timeline is on my frame. So you can see in my tutorial, I have this frame around my images and that image should be the same on all my frames. So therefore I make that a linked cell. So if I'm ever editing anything, let's say I draw something on my frame here, I'll want to erase this bit. So every other frame will have that same edit I did to that particular cell. But the cool thing about the cells is that you can actually mix and match them. So you don't have to always have individual or linked cells on one layer. This was something I wish I knew earlier on, but I didn't realize it until a little later. But now it's saving me a lot of time when I do animations in a sprite. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So this next icon is really exciting as well. It's called the onion skin. And you can see here when I turn it on, it's going to look a little weird. Have you ever seen a traditional animator sitting at this table with some light in it and a bunch of pictures laying on top of each other and they can see through? That's basically what it does. To showcase probably how it works, I'm gonna jump into a different document real quick so I can show you how it works. So I'm gonna try and turn it on down here and you can see these little boxes come. Depending on how far I drag this is how much it's going to show of my animation. So I'm gonna make a ball that's gonna fall down and jump up and jump away. 
So you can see here when I scroll through my frames, I can see the next and previous frames of my animation that I just quickly draw. And this is really helpful for finding a reference of what you were doing before, because sometimes it can be quite difficult to animate just from remembering what the previous picture were, and you'll have to play through all the time. So this will really help you a lot eventually. So the next icon down here is the timeline settings icon, and it's split up to three segments. The first one is the position, and this is one thing I've been asked about a little bit as well, if I can move my layers to the right or to the left, because not everybody wants to have the timeline like uh, an animation software like Adobe Animate, but they might want to have their timeline looking more like Photoshop. But speaking of Photoshop, so there's also something called thumbnails here, and if I turn that on, you can see I get some more option. Nothing changes over here just by clicking on it. But you can then click on this one and you can see a little picture starts appearing. If you are not animating, you might actually want to have a little reference over here in a small thumbnail. Um, I personally don't use it, but for some people it might be really, really useful. So you can turn the thumbnail option on here if you would like to get a small reference. So the next one down here in the timeline settings is onion skin settings. So the first option down here is merge frames or red blue tint. What it basically does, like we showed here in our previous animation, if I turn on red and blue, you can see it will show the previous frames as a red tint and the next frames as a blue tint. And the merge one, of course, just shows it as a transparent picture. The next setting down here is how much op opacity you want to show of the next frame. So I'll try and just drag it up to like, uh, let's just say about 100 something. And then the next down here is for each next frame, how much it's going to be less transparent. So you can see if I go down to zero, it's, they are all going to have the same transparency. But if I drag it up a little bit, they are slowly getting more and more transparent the more frames it shows. If you have a lot of layers and they're overlapping each other, but you only want to see the onion skin on the layer that you're currently editing, you can turn on current layer only. That way it will only show the onion skin for that particular layer that you're editing. This next one is behind or in front sprite. It will basically just show the onion skin either behind your main sprite or in front of it. So that is a little bit about the onion skin settings. So before we move on to other things than the icon, down here. I just quickly want to run over what we have gone through so far. So the eye was basically to show or hide layers. The lock was basically to lock a layer in place and not being able to edit on it. The cell was basically to connect frames as the same picture or make them individual. And all the settings was where you would change how the onion skin timeline were positioned and show or not show thumbnails. And last off, onion skin was basically where you would have this kind of like see through of your sprite from previous and next frames. So that is what we've just gone through. Now let's move on to some other really useful things you can use in a sprite when you're animating. So the first thing I want to talk about is the frame drop down menu. A lot of the things up here you can do with short keys as well, which it shows here to the right. The first one is basically the frame properties. In here you can change how long the duration of the current frame is. You can also change the cell properties. So in that you can only change the transparency for that particular cell. And of course you can make a new frame, a new empty frame, duplicate a cell, duplicate and link a cell, and you can also remove a frame. And remember, all of these have short keys as well if you're one of those people. But there's also something called tag here, which I really wanna talk about. So let's move on to tags. So first up, what is tags? Well, down in your timeline, you might have a lot of different animation. Like for example, this Mario animation, this frame one, frame two, three, four, five, and six. But it's only frame one that his idle animation, two, three, and four is his running animation, and five is his shooting fireball, and six is his jumping animation. To show this a little more, I'm going to go into an animation I did a while back. In here you can see I've already tagged my animation down here below. The way you tag an animation is basically by selecting all the frames that you want to tag, then right click and you can write new tag. And when you do that, this window comes up, then you can name your tag. 
if you want to edit how many frames it is. I know this is from frame 1 to 13. And you can also change the color of the tag. And down here in the animation direction, you can change if it's going forward or if it's something that should play reversed or if something that should go forward and then backwards and then forward and backwards, basically ping pong. The cool thing about this is when you are playing your animation, it will only play that particular attack you're showing. So you can have all your animations down in one long timeline instead of several files and you can just tag them and that way it will make it a lot easier for you to have sort of everything in one file. And of course you can also right click on the tag itself and then you can remove it or you can change the properties of that particular tag if you want to change the color or something like that. So next up, I want to talk about the preview window, which is one of my favorite things about a sprite. So first of all, I'm going to hide my little face here and down here behind me, you can see there's a little button down here in the corner that says one to one. When you click that, this window will appear. And what this window does is making a preview of what you're currently working on. So you can, instead of scrolling in and out all the time and taking a look at your current work, you can just have a little preview window of it here and it's super lovely. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do with this preview window. First of all, I'm going to jump into the animation here again. So one of the things you can do with your main canvas is that you can scroll to zoom in and out. That you can too do with the preview window if you want to have the preview a little bigger. Sometimes it's nice to just have it zoomed in a little bit. Next up, sometimes I work super closely in my main canvas and I drag around. If you click this button here, when you drag around in your main canvas, it will also drag around in your preview window. I personally like to have the preview stuck and just placed where I like it, especially if it's a small sprite like this, maybe a bigger canvas, but for a small one, I'll make it stop. Next up, I can also play the animation, but you can see when I play the animation in the preview window, it only plays my current tag, which is the running animation, and it's not playing in my main canvas. This way I can go in and, and edit small things. Whatever you edit will happen right away on the preview window. And a lot of these things are really nice because sometimes you might have like onion skin and all sorts of things going on at the same time but you don't want to see that on your previews. You can also right click here on the play button and then you can change the speed. So if you want to make it faster in the preview window or if you want the animation to run slower to see the small details, you can change the speed by that. You can also change it to only play once or you can also play all the frames in your timeline and it will ignore the tags. So if I do that here, you can see when I play the animation now, it's going to ignore all the tags and just run through all the animations. Um, but I rarely use that. I always just have it to play tag only. That way I see what I'm actually working on. And the last button here will basically close down your preview window. So that was all about the preview window. And that is actually where we come to an end in the tutorial. These tools can be really useful if you learn to utilize them well in your workflow. So I encourage you all to try and play a little more around with them. Give it a go and kind of understand it because the more you know, the easier things get. Just before I want to go, I want to show you a few things to check out. One of the things I want to show you here is my new asset store that I've opened. You can go in here, there's both free stuff and there's also some tiles and characters for people who might want to use them in their own projects. Besides that, if you are a little bit of an apparel geek like me, you can also check out my Pixel shirt store that I've opened. There's a link to everything down below. Personally, I really like this kind of Pixel apparel. It uh, really suits my interests. So if you want to check some of these things out, feel free to uh, give it a go and I'll be adding more stuff over time of course. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, make sure to give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. You can also help me help you by supporting me on Patreon. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you later guys. Take care.